Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make our garden in perspective. We know that if we want the garden to look like it's going back into space, we're going to have our lines going at an angle like this. If our garden were to go like this with our horizon line and our lines straight up and down, it would look more like a fence. It would look like it was popping up at us. Artists use something called perspective to make things look like they are going back into space. So you're going to begin with your horizon line. We know that our horizon line is where our sky and our ground meet. So I'm going to do that maybe um, a little above the center. And then my next step is to make a vanishing point. The vanishing point is the point on the horizon that all of the rows lead to. I'm going to start at that vanishing point and I'm going to make an upside down V. So I'm going to start at the point and come straight down to the bottom and down to the bottom. Next I'm going to make, we want these wide enough that we can put some vegetables in them. So I want my next one to come towards the corner and towards the corner. My next one might go off the edge of the page and off the edge of the page and it's up to you how many of these you want. You can make a few more or you can have some just open fields on the sides. Maybe I'll make one more. Then the next step is to add a sun. You can add the sun wherever you'd like. It could go on the horizon line. It could go up in the sky. Um, it could be a larger circle. It's up to you. You can use something to trace your sun if you'd like. I think I'm going to make one setting right over the horizon by just tracing that semicircle. Next, I'm going to start adding my vegetables and the different crops in my field. These can be done right away with oil pastel or cray pot if you'd like. Um, you can draw them in pencil first, but it's really not necessary. We want to get onto the painting part of this if possible. So one idea to next do is to start with whatever you'd like to make. I think I'm going to start with some pumpkins. And if I make my pumpkin, we know that as things are closer to us, they look pretty big. So I'm going to make my pumpkin. You can also see a lot more detail on things that are closer to you. So I might make this pumpkin that has this green stem and some vines and some leaves. And now as things get further away, they appear smaller. So my next pumpkin might be a little bit smaller. And then my next one might be a little smaller than that and a little smaller than that. And they get less and less detailed as you go further back. And as you get way back there, they almost might appear just as little dots. I could add some stems again to some of them I might not see too many details the further I get back. I might just have some little green dots. Now see how quickly I was able to do that. Next, I might add another vegetable. You can really be creative with this. You could have flowers in your garden. Um, I'm thinking maybe I'll add some corn. Uh, maybe I'll make some corn. An easy way to make corn is to make some like a yellow sort of a V shape and then take my green and make some leaves that kind of come down like this. some tall things and then maybe I can make some more going back further into the and way back there I remember I'm just doing some little dots so here's some corn in my field I might add some flowers in my field maybe I'll make some pink flowers over here and again in the sun in the foreground it's called closest to us you might see a lot of detail. I might see the center of that flower. I might see some leaves. And as I go back, they're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And you'll see less detail as you go. Now, once you have all of your crops finished, you can add some small details. Now, if I were to add a farm, a barn, or a fence, or any animals in the field, if they're way back here near the horizon, would they appear big or small? They would appear small. So, for example, this barn is way back near the horizon line, so it's pretty small. So you can add things like that to your paper. You should definitely color in your sun with the oil pastels. You should 
probably add with your white oil pastel a little bit of clouds in your sky and you'll see why in the next step those will look kind of cool one other option is to take either a brown or a green cray pot and go over your crop lines especially if they were light that will help them show up in the next step as well so you could do that when you are all finished with all of that, the next step is going to be adding some paint. Now you would fill in more crops. I am going to move right onto the paint so I can show you the next step. We are gonna be using some uh, temper cakes as the type of paint for today. And temper cakes are good for big areas. So if you did draw a small barn or something back here, the, a better idea than to try and paint it with this would be to color it in first, maybe I'll make a blue barn, um, with the crepas because trying to um, paint in a small, air, small area like that does not work as well with these types of paints. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is start with painting. You could start with your sky. My sun is going down, so I might like to make kind of like a purpley sky. With these temper cakes, remember you need to get a little water on your brush, put it on there and really swish it around and around and that's what activates the color. And then I can start painting. And you'll notice that those white crepas that I made the clouds with are showing up now. I can add maybe a little bit of blue to my sky and I can, by going side to side like this, it helps it look um, sort of like this nighttime sky. So you could do whatever colors you'd like in your sky. I'd like to do purples and pinks, I think, for me. Then I can start on my farm. Notice how I'm washing my brush out pretty well. I'm not tapping on it. I'm swishing it around and around and then wiping it on the sponge to make sure that all of the extra paint is off. So I can switch now maybe to some green to add water to this kind of paint. And I could do, you could paint right over all of your rows with the green. Or if you wanted to make some rows green, you could make some rows brown because oftentimes the vegetables are just growing in the dirt. So it's up to you really how you choose to paint in your farm. So have fun with this. When you're all finished, these need to go on the drying rack. Can't wait to see what you create.